Oh, I got the, <laughs> the white Zoom lady this time. Damn. Good. <laughs> you in the dumps like me. <laughs> oh, man. What up, what up? Well, welcome back to another episode of Cultivated Ignorance. I am Will, the host. I am Mike, the favorite host. And today we are joined by one of the scariest women on the internet. <laughs> yes. No, Thank no, you. no, not that person. Uh, we are oh, okay. the lovely Miss uh, Jill Louise Busby. How you doing? I'm doing. I couldn't wait to meet her. I was so excited because I knew that I would be attracted to whoever that was. <laughs> She's not here. Luckily, for my sake, she is not here. Yeah. Um, formerly known as Jill is Black. Uh, Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing so well. Listen. I'm so happy to be here. We are. How is the book going? You know, as they go. I mean, it's out there. I can't tell, but like all my mom's friends are very excited about it. So <laughs> as long as I'm meeting that targeted demographic, I feel like I'm just fine. If you were class of 82 Skyline High School, then you love this book. Um, okay. Other than that, <laughs> who knows? We shall see. You know, you got like sold out book signers out here. I saw the lines around the like Staples Center, like people just clamor on each other. Just, mm. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I almost I almost forgot about that. You're right. Yeah. That part. Like Black Friday style. It's been it's been mm-hmm. wild. Jill is Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> the whole rapper out here. No, for real. It's been super dope to see like so many people like so excited, like myself. As you saw on my Instagram story, like I was counting down the days for this book to come out. And uh, I'm so glad to see so many people are loving it. Just as, maybe not as much as I am or well, will for that matter, but so happy to see you getting so much love because it's well deserved. Yeah, it's been really nice. That's dope, man. So normally we do our Patreon shout out, but we are just going to jump right into it because I'm super excited. Uh, www.patreon.com slash cultivated ignorance. Um, so, uh, Mike, this is kind of your thing. Ask all your questions, baby. <laughs> Ask all your questions. <laughs> yeah, see how we do the show? Uh, I see. Yeah, I see. Theme. Uh, for those that don't know, um, Jill Louise Busby has put out this amazing, amazing, amazing-ass book um, back in September. Um, I read it within, like, three or four days. Um we're not going to so much do like a play by play of the book, but the book is basically, do you want to just tell people what the book is about? I don't want to put words in, in your mouth or anything. I was so hoping to hear you describe it so that I could get some pointers. Um, I would say <laughs> that it is a book where um, I'm in a showdown with my online persona and myself. We are finally battling it out to see who will win. Uh, plot to us, no one. Um <laughs> Um, to see who will win, but it's basically like a, a memoir and essay is sort of the story behind um, an online persona. You don't have to know my online persona because it, it wasn't that big, but for you to understand what's happening, because I think that we all have them. Um, and then behind them, we have a real life. So I think what I was trying to do is reconcile what that looks like um, as honestly as possible. And also in the same sort of real time as social media, whether that worked or not, give me five years to get a clear head around it right now and be like I don't know but in five years I might be like oh Jill that was so great why didn't you give yourself any credit but I wouldn't be me without it so listen you know go ahead and fast forward to five years because like I told you like this is definitely the most vulnerable the most honest at this point I feel like we all collectively know like how much harm social media has caused in our lives we kind of like collectively like recognize that but I've never heard someone who is a known, like, you know, popular internet um, persona talk about the mindset, the the mental gymnastics you kind of jump through um, navigating, like, is this person I'm putting online, like, my actually me? Or is it just like, I'm, am I playing up to, for some type of social or monetary capital? Mm-hmm. Um, the tug of war of that, the... And all in the name of, I guess you would call like social justice efforts of right. calling out white people, calling out black people as well. Um, so dealing with that also and trying to do this, you know, noble thing, but also like, what am I doing to maintain the status online? And is this, is this right? Like, is this what I wanted mm-hmm. to do? Is this, is this mm-hmm. what I intended to do? I've never heard someone do that so thoroughly and so thoughtfully uh, like you have in this book. I appreciate book. that. Sure. I appreciate that. 
especially if you're, I think, on the internet in a way where you are saying that you are promoting some sort of social justice or working for the people in some way, because there's all different ways to do influence. If I was on there, like, with one of those great accounts where they just, like, do really great nail polish or something, I, I wouldn't necessarily need this, but I'm fine. I'm having a good time. I know what I'm here for, but I think I especially, because I got to come up during a time when we were woke means something really different now because Republicans have found it. But I think at the time, you know, when it was like, oh, we were all trying to elevate and have a, a giant social and spiritual understanding all at once, but competitively, I think coming up during that time, you know, it was especially important because what a mess. Um, <laughs> what a giant mess so I want to say not everybody there are people who know what they're doing online and it probably isn't like interrupting their psyche that much to show up and do what they're doing maybe the scrolling is maybe how they're jealous of other people but what they're actually putting on content wise may not be neither good nor bad I think for this particular avenue I wanted to see some more vulnerability because it seems like it was everything but vulnerable while professing to be like while professing to be honest in so many ways like it's so weird how like honesty gets commodified it's so wild it's crazy um so i'll just do a quick i guess telling of what the today's um the theme of today's show is um what we're talking about today is basically asking the question like as black americans whether you be an activist or artist reformist revolutionaries thinkers, dreamers, believers, people who simply just want to enjoy life without racialized struggle or oppression. Uh, how do we resist being complicit to a system that thrives from our marginalization? But it seems that there's so many constant incentives to do the exact opposite. Uh, and like I said, we got Jill here to just talk about, if you want to reference the book throughout your, this conversation, that's cool. But I feel like you just have some great thoughts on this subject. Um, I guess I kind of want to start out by asking for those who may or may not know who Jill's Black is, um, how would you describe Jill Louise Busby in comparison to Jill Jill's Black? Like, how would you describe that comparison? Um, Jill is Black uh, became my online persona. I've told the story a couple times, but it wasn't on purpose that I named it Jill is Black. Um, it seemed very faded because all of my names were taken. I had a friend who was like, oh, I need to get you on Instagram right away so you can see this person I'm trying to um, hit on. And I was like, I really don't want to be on Instagram and also Facebook, but I will get on. And so I was very quickly like finding someone like Jill is Black because it was the only thing not taken. And so it would go on to become um, sort of the capsule for all of my complaints, uh, all of my critique, all of my feelings. It initially started as feelings around you know, having a foot in and a foot out. I think that no one needed to really cry for me. I had a foot in and a foot out. And sometimes when you're showing up to that job, pretending to be that person, you're gonna have some feelings. And um, so I was using Instagram to sort of like vent. Um, and I thought, you know I, know, I know a lot of people in these jobs. I know a lot of people in these schools. I know a lot of people in these worlds where they too are like, oh, I have all this critique of these white people, but also here I am <laughs> working at their job. <laughs> <laughs> letting them think I'm coming in here to say and do this thing. Um, and so, you know, it was very targeted. It's like, I, it's a frustrating place to be in. But then eventually I was like, but wait, how, how are we complicit in it? Like what's going to change about it other than needing to like have a vent session, say that white people are the worst and we're awesome and the best and we win when we're not actually changing anything. And we're also considering it success anytime we're near them. Um, so there just was a lot of contradiction. I think eventually I started, Jill is Black started getting wrapped up in the contradiction. I think myself, well, I'm a full person. Um, so there's that. I am not as wrapped up in the contradiction at this point in my life. I feel like Jill is Black is like my performative self, my ego, the kind that needs attention, the person who needs to like, I can't think a thought without hearing you tell me that the thought is right. I can't believe this unless somebody else believes it. I only feel good when I see my own opinions reflected back to me. That's, that's Jill is Black. Um, and Jill Louise Busby at this point is like, I don't know what I believe today. I've been wrong so many times at this point that I've been humbled into just waiting to see what is next and then trying to be as honest about that process as possible, which really feels like 
when you're putting something, I don't want to call Jill's Black a, a negative thing because I don't think it was that, but when you are putting so much vitriol out into the world, uh, when you have the opportunity, what else are you giving to Black people? So I wanted this to be different than just what I had put out there before, which is here are 112 reasons to be mad every day of your life. Um, and I can think of more than that, but why do I need to anymore? We have plenty. So um, I guess Jill is Black became, at least in, in my circle, in our circles, she became such a well-known figure. Did you ever have that moment um, where Jill is Black started to come off of the internet and kind of start, you know, affecting your, not necessarily relationships, but just how you interacted with people? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, my immediate answer wasn't a true answer. I was going to say only when I'm in like Atlanta and New York or something where people actually <laughs> follow me. Because other than that, I started this in Olympia, Washington. Nobody knew what I was doing. Um, and so I wasn't getting that part of being online and like having my followers grow or whatever. I could see it just online, but I couldn't experience it in my life. Um, and then I would like go to New York. People would be like, oh, Jill is black. And I would be like, wow, okay, I'm glad that I don't live here for this part of it. And of course, I also loved it. Let me not just lie. Um, but I think, yeah, I think what I noticed was that I stopped asking questions. And then I started to also perceive myself as like the smartest person in the room at all times. Because if you have a whole comment section of people just being like, oh, yes, this is right, which is really, I agree with you. Right, because the second I would have said something they don't agree with, they would be like, you're not very smart at all. Uh, and that's totally fair, because I would have said the same thing to them back. Uh, but I had a whole bunch of people agreeing with me on a very limited perspective. Um, and they were also using their own perspective to agree with me. So theirs wasn't necessarily limited. It could have just been like, oh, we like this part that you're saying. I would get people that liked me and would also be like, I don't agree with everything that you say. I just like the way that you do it or something like that. But for me, yeah, I think, I think I got a little smug for a while um, because it was, and I wouldn't say dangerously so, but certainly it changed how I talked in a room um, and the confidence. And so I think hopefully what is left is confidence in just saying what I mean, um, but not that part where I've been validated so much that I'm just like hype off of all the people's like, yes, Jill, go, go, go. That's a scary place to be. Mm. I can imagine, like, so this is like a part of you felt like you had to kind of turn it on and off or whenever you met those people in like New York or whatever that in busy places, like, did you, when you instantly got recognized, did you feel like, okay, I got to turn it on? No, because I turned it on so much already. I had to do the opposite because some people were scared of me. So then I had to be nicer, you know, and I was excited to do that. Like I wanted people to meet me and be like, oh, actually, wait, you're like a nice person. So then it was already the Jill Louise Busby coming out of being like, wait, I'm not just this. Um, so no, I, I enjoyed the interaction. I think the turning on, I'm a performative person anyway. So it was really hard to figure out when I was doing, if not Jill is Black, some other performance when I was out in public, because I'm kind of shy and introverted until I'm not. So I'm always like, who will we be when we go to the party? Who will we be when we're in this room? How do we turn this on? So I'm always like that. I just think that Jill is Black became the dominant performative self that I had, if that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Absolutely. I know what you're saying. So in a conversation like about combating complicity, I feel like it's always good to define what everyone thinks of as liberation um, from that from even having to do that complicity. So I would ask you like, how do you or do you even define like black liberation? Like, how do you define that? I don't right now. I saw that question and, and panicked. I was like, whoa, <laughs> I hope <laughs> that they do it. Um, Right now, I'm tempted to say that I don't know how to get there without us believing in ourselves, actually. Um, you know, as opposed to all this external stuff that we keep talking about. I don't know. The internal seems to be what gets us because, you know, our trustworthiness with each other seems to always be on the edge. Like, do I trust this Black person to not secretly be aligned with this group or this group? I, I don't know. Um, Black liberation, that's something we would have to decide collectively the way that we mean it. For me right now, I am trying to live while I'm here. If I spent all of my time just focused on this, I don't know why I would be 
in existence at all <laughs> to just be here and be mad at white people doesn't seem to be the purpose. So then my question is, fine, we live this kind of life. What is the purpose of it? Uh, what is the information that only we have? What is the part of the spiritual journey that requires this? I'm more interested in why this than I am the other because um, I don't know. What, I don't know what we want. Mm. If I'm being honest, I don't. I don't know what we want anymore. When I see it out in the world, I don't get it. So mm. I don't. I can't make it make sense. Um, but I think you know there are people who say no. We can never team up with white people, we can never be in this world. It is flawed from the ground up and anything we do in there is flawed. Um, the only answer is revolution. And then you have people who mean like, I wanna be a representative, like I wanna be a star, I wanna be the top this. I think if I can get in there, I can turn it inside out from the, you know, we keep hearing they're gonna go in and change the whole thing. Uh, but those are two very different things to think. And right now we seem to be grouping them a lot um and so then they just become lies in either direction they become lies if we say we take a person who's supposed to be about revolution and all of a sudden we put them on a stamp um a living one because we've completely commodified any dead ones but a living one and we say oh here's a show and here's a this and here's a <sighs> okay i mean i don't know what part of revolution <laughs> that is that does not mean that I don't think you should have your show. I just don't think you should call it a revolutionary show on that network. That's all. Um, so I think it's when we call one thing something else that I, it loses me and I get confused. So until I figure that out, I don't know how to speak to it. Um, was there was maybe there, none of us do? Was there? I'm sorry. Was there a time where you thought you did know what we wanted as black people? I'm sure I did. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, I would have I would have gone with the revolutionary answer because I tend to not trust things that happen in there. Um, I just don't from being in there, from how I act when I'm in there, all kinds of reasons. So I, I tend not to trust that. What I did not know for sure is how we were going to get there. Um, I had no good idea for how we were going to turn around this giant <laughs> ship headed in one direction and make it this other thing that we kept saying. I absolutely did not know. And if I'm being honest, I still don't. Maybe small acts are what we're saying. Oh, collectively, we'll do these, do these small acts and we'll change things for people around us. I guess if we all did that, we would have a type of revolution. But as far as that big one that we keep naming, I don't think we have enough Black people that want that. I'm not such a good look at Will. It was like, oh shit, she's a such a shit. No, I think oh, you're absolutely God. right. <laughs> we might want to ask right. though. I think you're speaking to like, and I have friends who've been saying this forever, but I didn't get it until like a couple about a year ago. You're speaking to how we had to have to say black communities like plural and not black community. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's this endless <laughs> debate slash fight slash whatever you want to call it. Mm. of like what when are, when are all the blacks going to get it together <laughs> and like the refusal the refusal to acknowledge that all the little blacks cannot be on the same page just like any other racialized people cannot be on the same page mm. right. but like because we have so, we feel like we have so little idols or leaders or whoever we put out all our eggs into a, a jay-z or a umar johnson that's that's will's guy umar johnson or no. <laughs> <laughs> or I was or like, a I have a story for you. Yeah, or Marcus Garvey. Like, it's going to be, like, all these people that we just put yeah. everything into. And then the second they fuck up or we learn something about right. them that we didn't know before, oh, we got to right. start from scare one. Like, this is an endless exactly. battle as well. Mm -hmm. So um, so when it comes to social media, um, and I guess you you blew up in um, 2016 was when you went viral, correct? Mm -hmm. So that was kind of before this, I guess you could call it creator economy that kind of boomed since the um, Corona virus pandemic, where like everybody wants to be a creator now. <laughs> you got thoughts on that? <laughs> mm, yeah. I, so, uh, yeah, I still have my job. Um, I've mm -hmm. had it for uh, the best parts of this experience, because when I was depending on just being paid off of that persona, it got real scary. Um, and I didn't do that on purpose. I was like on from the last job in between mm. jobs. And during that time, I was like, oh, you're going to take anything <laughs> because you need this money. That scares mm -hmm. me. 
that scares me. Now there's someone who's doing it successfully somewhere, but since we're asking me, I think I am able to make a lot more choices around what I do because I also have um, a job that I like enough and that pays me not very much, but enough to cover what I need. And then I get to figure out how to be public, mm -hmm. right? So I can go live a private life, a very simple life, watch out for all the things everybody else is watching out for and, and just go. But if I feel like there's something worthy about doing some of this publicly, then yeah, I'm gonna keep a job. Um, I'm, I'm gonna have to keep the job. And, and again, maybe for them, it motivates them to make new things and be creative i'm not that person so no it wasn't during that time and also that would not have worked for me i would have started doing things that i did not want to do that was going to be the next question is did you ever reach a point especially at the height of your internet popularity did you ever reach a point that you felt like you had to just do anything to remain relevant um, <laughs> we did some questionable things it sounds like <laughs> Thanks. It was Thanks. that one Umar event. Um, <laughs> yes and no. The one Umar event. It was. It, it's funny. There, there's yes and no. Um, I turned down a lot of things because you know I have an accountability team in my family, and my mother's only going to let me go so far. My brother's only going to let me go so far. So I look at these people and they're like not that and i'm like okay well, fine. <laughs> um and they're like if they say no i don't really care what the comment section says ultimately um so there were a few things at the beginning when they were like oh yes you have um what's a good word for it you've been around some white people and you're saying this stuff about race and we can tell both at once come on in here and we'll let you talk on the news or something whatever that version was of me i couldn't do it because my family wouldn't let me do it i took some events that i didn't love but i said what i wanted to say when i got there sometimes that wasn't great um sometimes it was it really depended on the audience I think I'm too neurotic for this. I think I'm always going to be like, oh, this doesn't feel great. Um, and not go as far as I feel like I, I don't even know if I could because I haven't gotten close enough to see. They may not be offering it to me when I really look at it. They're like, Joe, nobody's offering you anything. But I mean, I don't, I don't think so. Um, but we'll see if I turn around and you see me with like, some deal on some streaming service for <laughs> something then you know what happened uh, and you can have me back on here and i'll just go ahead and answer to what's going on um, um but not too many not too many and i wasn't making a lot of money either i wasn't sustaining myself so it wasn't one of those things where i'm like oh i'm making coins out here taking these events i, I wasn't i wasn't getting booked a lot i wasn't popular enough for that um i wasn't big enough to sustain myself on that what, what were your like just real quick what what was the most followers you ever remember yourself having i mean i think maybe on instagram it got to like eighty five thousand. Oh. um yeah but not that, like my mother told me she was like oh you'll never make it to a hundred thousand and this was like as the numbers were going up but she was like oh no you won't i can't even see it <laughs> i was like there's there's no indication right now i am popping i'm going up please why are you saying? she's like no it's like it's too specific and eventually you're going to start saying things that are going to have people drop and i'm like ah. and this was before i was doing it but she was right it was never going to become the two million three million person account um which turned out to be a good thing i was saying i thought like there's so much power in that like there's so much power in not chasing that the views, the likes, the shares, like one thing I've always really proud of me and Will about on this podcast is like, if we just don't like have a quality topic, even if we're bullshitting, like it's got to be quality bullshit. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it can't just be us just like talking in circles for like an hour just to get views. Like if we don't have quality topics, we just won't do yeah. a show and that'll be I, it. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you follow for Harriet at all. Um, Kim um, Foster. Did. Uh, she's really big on that. Like, you know, it took her 10, 11 years, I believe, to get her platform to where it is now. But like, she has that creative freedom to just not make content if it doesn't feel right. Um, yeah, it's so, 
it's so wild how you just get lost in, especially, all right, this is the next topic, I guess. So especially when you're speaking on you know, systemic issues, you're trying to call out, you know, the powers that be and bring them down. Um, what I love, like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, what I love most about the book is how intimately and how intricately you describe how you can come to the, you know, the internet with this, you know, this brazen presence, this over the top, you know, critique, this, you know, the snobbishness and everything like that to call out this, the system and how easy it is for that system to just take people like that um, and commodify their voice, commodify mm -hmm. that rage. And it's something that's more profitable, not only for the system, for that person as well. Yeah. Um, is there a way, I think you call it like um, alternative assimilation, something of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way to avoid that happening without burning the system down entirely? <laughs> or is that the only <laughs> option? I mean, I haven't done it. Um, I, <laughs> there was another way to have this book, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the only thing I could figure out was like, hold yourself accountable in the book, but I wanted, like, if we're going to get, I have favorite things in this world. I have favorite media. I have favorite books that I feel so grateful to have out in the world. So, I, I mean, I'm at a point where I really don't know how I feel about us making all of this content. Like, do I feel like we can go in and trick our ways into some honesty? Yeah, because I don't think they know what it is. So I don't think it's completely true to say, oh, we can't say anything. That's not true. They don't know everything that you're talking about, nor are they interested. There's plenty of ways that Black people talk to each other that we could continue to do right in the open. Um, It's a great Black Mirror episode about this, but people say that about everything. I, yeah, they'll buy the honesty. They'll buy the honesty. They'll buy the revolution if need be. So you better be having that internally so that you're not buying everything they're selling. Um, you know, there's like a, a way, there's like an entitlement to us living here and getting everything we want because of, of racism. And I can't live that life either. I don't want excess. Right. So I could go in here and make a whole bunch of money, but I don't want to live an excessive life. I don't think that that's the best way to do this is just show up and just take all of the things. And I get to go on vacation everywhere. When I think of that, I think fossil fuels. Um, when I think of that, I think, oh, you're going to go over to that place where tourism has become an industry for a group of people who are now desperate and depending on it and who are also like I that's just where I am. So I don't believe in the excess necessary anyway. If you're already in a place where you believe that the only way to exist on earth is excessively in any way that you're doing it, I don't know what to tell you. I think you're going to choose the machine because that's where excess lives, right? So you would have to already be okay with saying, I'm going to live a life. Yes, I want my bills paid. It is not a great feeling to not be able to like meet your needs in this country, in any country. Right. So no, I'm not saying that. When did we get so excessive that it's Jay-Z? And that's the only option. And there's no ethical question. I can't even ask one. I can't even say, wow, this is a lot of resource. Do we feel like we're getting a good bargain here on this, on this popularity? Do we feel like we're getting... Okay, but you can't ask. I mean, because again, we're attached to the symbols and the people and and we want it. We want to get that rich. So as long as we too want to get that rich, then we will validate the behavior of the people who already have the things that we want. And I'm not interested in validating other people's behavior based on me being jealous of them. Anyway, that feels like a setup. Um, so I, I, I don't know, but that's not for me. I think that I wrote a book that I felt like didn't completely change my life. You know, I'm still in the same place doing the same thing. This is not the book that everybody's going to love. It's not going to be a, a happy black girl book. Um, and right now that's what I'm being sold at, or sold, just sold, is I'm entitled to all the joy, uh, trips, alcohol, um, and whatever I want as long as I am happy. Oh. You know, like, I mean, right. I'm, I'm happy. I have a grad degree. I'm happy. Like, I, you know, I mean, that's what I'm being sold right now is the persona of successful black college graduate woman, usually with some more degrees so that we can 
do the percentages higher and I'm inspired by women around me who no longer associate with black men or uh, truly root for them or themselves beyond representation. That is who I'm supposed to be for um, political figures, sports figures, music people. Um, and once you don't admire them, it makes the journey a lot more easy because um, who's left to admire? People who have walked away or people who are okay with where they are. Oh. Yeah, so, you know, but I get what I'm supposed to be into. I just happen to not be into it. That is, this is why you're on the show. Golly, like, that's what I'm talking, like, that dynamic of it's either got to be Jay-Z or <laughs> complete Black despair. Like, either your life has that's, to be. That's, that's it. <laughs> There's nothing in between. And we talk about, let me actually be fair. We talk about Jay-Z, but I know a lot of people who can make it to the top in a lot of different industries that aren't media-based industries and become completely separate than Black people, right? I mean, you can be an astrophysicist who's now going around doing speaking tours for $25,000. You know, like there are other ways to do this behind the scenes. We just happen to know our celebrities. So I don't want to act like it's just them. Black people have a million ways to move away and um, build these separate kind of lives where we try to stay safe, you know? And I don't know how mad I can get at people who are trying to stay safe. Safety is, safety is safety. Hopefully we can talk and get to that. Um, so in that though, so I think about the fact that we've all, well, I don't want to speak for Jill. I think that's the difference for me and Will. We've all idolized the Jay-Z or Beyonce, especially as mm -hmm. like the end goal at some point. And I can say me and Will still debate about these things, but I have swayed away from that. Like I still like Jay-Z's music, but for me, liberation does not look at all like Jay-Z. Jay-Z for me in a, in a form looks like, you know, blackface, white supremacy in a lot of ways. And and how, you know, the whole rap persona of like, once I get it now, I get the shit on the poor people. Like that whole thing is like not liberation for me. Right. But like, do you think that and like there's just a general performative progressivism that is usually spearheaded by like liberals? Do you think that's a necessary pathway for more people to learn the truth about things? Like, do you think that's a necessary thing to go through to eventually come out of the other side of and be like, wait a minute, like black capitalism is still black, still capitalism. Like, <laughs> do you think that's necessary or how do you feel about it? I think it makes things nicer sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, now that they've had a couple of the DEI trainings and they don't say like some things in public that they used to, um, I think that can make it a nicer experience for people, but um, will it rock them to sleep? That's the question. Possibly. I think that um, I used to be scared of it for white people, but now I'm scared of it for black people because it's created a lot of um, incentive for us to be like, okay, now these jobs, or we talk to white people all the time about what they should and shouldn't do. And then you get to have a, a creative culture on that. And here's the art about that. And I know this is coming because I've thought about it a lot, but here's the art with the pain and the trauma, here's the trauma for sale. Like now I'm worried about what that sets up for us and also, you know, we, we have accountability. We make choices too. We're not just always in response to white people. Um, it's a really nice protective shield though to say, I don't know, I don't think we would do it without white people. I mean, we've been doing it a long time now. Um, I've watched people make this choice in real time. I think that black progressivism is really interesting at this point. And I think I spent a lot more time on that than I do white progressivism. Like they're going to want to keep giving you the money, right? So it's always going to be like, we're going to come to you. Please help us understand you. And they're always going to be in the position of still feeling as safe as they can. I'm not even saying that that doesn't make sense because if everybody just wants to be safe in the chaos, then white people would know better <laughs> to be like, here, we'll hand this over. They're, they're not going to do it. And I don't know. I mean, I'm watching other groups not do it. So I'm like, okay, fine. You're not going to do it. You started this thing. You want to feel safe. You want to live in illusions. You don't want to feel guilty because you're liberal. So you want black people on board for this. Also, you can use us as weapons against white people that you don't like so much. Um, so fine, but what what do we think we're doing? I mean, I guess I would ask y'all, like what, what, what do we think if it's not classism 
and hierarchy building and setting apart from uh, because white people have that problem you know as they ascend they are doing all kinds of classist and ridiculous how do we think they got there i guess as we try to do we think we'll just do it better than them once we're i, I mean i'm confused by it like i i just uh, i really don't understand why we think we will do the same things better than them with the same stakes worse stakes because we're us and so it's never quite honest this is what I would ask. Is it that we think we would do it better than them? Or is it what you touched on and probably my favorite essay of the book, um, The Consequence of Us, when you talk mm -hmm. about your grandmother trying to perform her way out of a, a, a what, I'm gonna, right. I want to quote exactly. My grandmother thinks she performed her way out of a type of blackness that is punishment, a type of blackness that is sad. That is like prime black parent of, I just want my kids to be safe. I just want myself to be safe. Mm -hmm. um, I want my kids to not be too loud. You, I want them to be only big in the spaces that they made, um, big by their rules. Yeah. Is it that we're just trying to be as safe as possible? <laughs> I don't yeah. want that to be the answer. You're right. That is what that essay is about. I don't want, I don't want that to just be like, because then when, where will that leave us? If the goal is just always like... Right. I'm going to do whatever it takes for me and mine always. That might be true, but where does that leave us? And then also, I don't think that's true for everybody I meet. I'm sure that's not Mike and Will out here in the world being like, I'm going to get mine and just forget all these other Black people. It's not everybody, but I guess some of us. Um, and I worry that the progressivism will enlist more of us because we will feel like, well, might as well do this and i think we still have a spirit now that says oh but i can never quite get in there you know even if i do it doesn't quite work i think that's important for us so i think the more it makes it seem like see here we are at martha's vineyard just <laughs> being happy bugs and we always did this it's not new like and then we got to remind ourselves we were always there and then we i get it's it cycle. We, it's the whole we, we we of course we were always there like that's the whole point is that we keep cycling around and we've had the black bourgeoisie for a long time i mean for a long long time and yes it used to be based more on colorism but it still is and other things so i i mean i don't know i guess that is the answer Got it. Darn it. this is why this is why i love your mom first of all like <laughs> i already loved your mom <laughs> from um moms as managers yes yes uh, which is moms as managers is it ever making a comeback or are we just leaving that alone is it just it might have to. It, it's the most it's fun I to. have. So it might have to after this. Please do. Um, but not only for that, but because like you talked about in the book how she prioritized you learning about the world more than you just getting like a standard education. Um, how do we incentivize more of that type of parenting as black people um, over like the whole like safety lifestyle thing? Like how do we incentivize incentivize more parenting like that? I think it depends on where you're coming from. I think she was up against a family that taught her that this thing doesn't work. And that's a very specific thing for a Black person to be up against. A, a traditional family, you know, hey, we're trying to ascend. We're trying to get higher and higher and higher up in these hills so that we don't see these people anymore. If we see Black people, then they're like us. And so her rebellion was against that. That's not everybody's story. I think it's an important story, but I don't think it's everybody's story. I think it depends on what the origin story is, but I think it's possible for everybody. The only one I can speak to is hers, which is if you find yourself living in a lie, your family is living in a lie, you're no longer close because now the white man lives in there. Uh, but really it's just you, I shouldn't even blame him. Um, then, maybe you could consider saying why like why is this what i believe why do i think this is success why? because that's what she did um but she was also she had a mother that was a difficult mother so it also set her up to challenge the way that she was right some of us can't even admit that we've had a difficult parent right so i think it just really really depends um and i'm not a parent so it's really hard for me to want to speak to like how are you going to parent some kids i don't have because i would have kids and then i'd be like oh these kids have to stay safe and before you know it now you're like is that jill on like 
know, is she on the Colbert? Like, who knows? Because then my focus becomes like, no, I've got to, they deserve everything. They need enough money. They need it. I don't know how that goes. Um, and I just, I don't know. So you're going to have to get me back on here um, that's after that's do. part of my life. And I'll answer, <laughs> but I don't want to speak for people who are like, girl, you don't know. I, I don't want my son out here. This play, like I'm trying. Um, and I don't know how people try. I can say all of this stuff in this interview. And at the end of the day, I don't know your life. Right. I'm speculating. Um, but I believe in this kind of speculation. I believe in this kind of honest conversation, but it's not necessarily right or true. I just mean it. Um, so when I know how to just mean that, because my kid is, you know, living far, far away from all of this somewhere and I'm paying five million dollars a year for him to go to school, you know, in a barn house and so, like fine. But until then, I, I believe in rebellion against what doesn't feel right because I think it doesn't feel right for a reason well I would ask you like since you're the one with a kid here um like do you ever think about that question uh yes and I absolutely <laughs> believe in safety <laughs> yeah I absolutely believe I mean like hey I want the world to change and all but like I need to keep you safe yeah. as a parent like it's a failure if, if you don't make it to adulthood or you get right. you know what I mean like it's it's a complete failure mm -hmm. on my part so yeah. uh, just for cautionary purposes, like I, I need you to get to schooling, do whatever you got to do to get to 80 grand a year, live comfortably. Hopefully when you're an adult, that actually is worth. I'm about to say, yeah. by the time you're an adult, that's going to be minimum wage. Well, one day I'm going to make that. Look, I was like yeah. goals. I was like in five years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> soon, soon. Yeah, man. Really? Revolution. Yeah. Dangerous for a parent. That makes sense. I mean, honestly, that makes complete sense. And also, who am I? Like, I didn't escape any of this. I have a, a brother who went to boarding school in Pebble Beach. I have like, I think what I had was the conversation about why we were doing it. So I guess I would add saying like, are you telling your kids like, this is why this does not, this is not necessarily an ethic or what I believe in whatever, but we plan, like we're playing because this is what's on the line. I think my mother did a lot of like, I don't believe in this shit, but you don't have it. Like <laughs> if that's what it takes, you will have it. So that was definitely a part of my upbringing too, is like she was also navigating for safety and to have us as resourced as possible while also being like, and your school is bullshit, but you gotta go to this college. So I found you this way, you know, like mm. she got creative, but, um, and we were allowed to challenge it, but we had it. Yeah. we had it and she yeah. had gone to law school too which means that we also had a mother who was oh hold on they can't say this to you oh hold on this can't and that is a a privilege in this society not just as a black person but really anybody in a country with laws they don't know very well so there was all kinds of things happening i would be a hypocrite to be like no we just raise our kids free and see what happens and revolution <laughs> like <laughs> that's come on come on that's that constant. I mean, like I said, we all struggle with complicity as Americans. Um, but that is that very special type of fight that I feel like Black people must yeah. think about, like, as, a, as yourself, and then especially when you have kids. Like, mm -hmm. to this day, I know many of our parents um, still every day want us to be safe. Anytime, yeah. like, you can go to, like, a peaceful protest or something, but anything <laughs> other than that, like, oh, no, you, no, stay your ass at home. Oh man, that's such a good conversation. Um, all right, we're running a long time. I definitely want to get to this question. Um, so back to Jill's Black. Um, I watched the uh, interview you did with uh, what's his name? Jason Reynolds, I believe his name is. Um, very dope interview. Y'all both and y'all both Sagittarius. That's why y'all my people. Um, oh my god, it was a lot of ego in the room. Look, so we're the only Taurus in here. Okay, that's you're sad to say. What are you? I'm a Sagittarius. You're a Sagittarius too. Well, what are you? Jesus. I'm a Taurus. Boo. Stubborn. <sighs> Loyal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the kids going to be safe as fuck. Like, right. right. You know what I'm saying? Kids be locked like, in the I cave. don't care what you're saying. <laughs> this will happen. Um, <laughs> sad. Care. When's your birthday? Uh, May 7th. Uh, May 7th. Didn't they, didn't they just change the calendar? The, um... But they changed so, the calendar or the, the, the... Yeah, it's been different. I'm actually not a Sagittarius on paper what? anymore. 
you may not be either. There's like another sign that wants the calendar adjusted. So I know. The white know. supremacy at work. Just trying to snip. That's, that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's okay. white supremacy. Precisely that's, what it is. That's just what it is. Oh, um, anyway, I remember a part of the interview about you were talking about how um, the, the struggles of remaining true to oneself and being honest while putting on this internet persona on the internet, not just for you, but like for anybody, if that's even possible. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm wondering is, can someone make like a jealous black type personality that is, like I said, very brazen, um, very in your face, um, can that be created and put on the internet the service, the purpose that you're intending to serve and it be as extreme as it needs to be while remaining true to yourself? Is that possible? Or is like jealous black kind of a tool that needs to be used to its fullest and most extreme until it's no longer useful and then set to the side? I didn't do it successfully. Um, maybe somebody else could take it and see what they come up with. I mean, I'm leaving room for someone doing this much, much better than I could, but I could not because we are still greater than our curated selves online. And I'm, I'm still planning that out. I mean, I would do like tw sometimes, I mean, just a ridiculous amount of takes on a Jill's Black video, right? Like, I mean, I'm just sitting in here and people are like, yes, yeah, speak to them. <laughs> like, I'm like, no, hold on one more time. Okay, I'm, I'm cutting it, I'm editing, I'm filtering. Like, it's, it's just, I'm putting on an outfit because I still have to sell the persona of what I look like online. I have to, and I'm cognizant of all these things. I could lie about them, but I know what I'm doing. I'm still checking for likes and validations online, even at this point. So I can't imagine it to be possible, but maybe so. Um, I would think of it more as a tool. It was a tool for me. Now that you get to say everything you want, what are you saying? Right. If the first step was like, all right, now what? Like, put it all out there, Joe. You wanted to say all this shit while you were training. You couldn't say it. Say it. Here it is. Then I listened to myself and I was like, but what are you saying? Right. Because some of these videos I'll watch back and I'm like, I don't know how y'all listen to some of this because I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. You know, I'm like, mm. I love weed. So some of them, it, it you know, it, they were inspired. I, I just, I don't know, like, but I think there was a general feel that people connected to more with Jill's Black, so that even if it was like, you don't agree with me, or you don't necessarily know what I mean with this video, um, I think people liked the spirit of talking confidently about this stuff, because we don't often get to see somebody like, oh, come on, this is what white people think, period, let's end it, let's move on. And because the internet is such a place of going on and on and on and on, I think people liked the wrap up. I'm gonna talk real quickly, I'm gonna say it very confidently and now it's over. Uh -huh. And I don't even know, at some point people will be like, I didn't even listen to what you said. I just loved to hear you talk. And That's the internet. That's the internet right there, epitomized. I was like, the people were like, I watch these on mute a lot of the time. I'm like, oh my God. And I love your hair. Like, I'm just like, well, that you're not even allowed to say that in your own version of how we're supposed. So I just, I don't know, you know, I, and I can't answer what people like about it. I'm just assuming I'm the creator, right? Um, but I think it connected me to a lot of brilliant people um, like Mike and Will. And so I think it's true. But like, I think sometimes when you have, and I didn't have a bad intention ever, I had a changing intention and I still feel proud of what I did because I think I tried to show up enough to show each step. Like, oh, I don't feel this way anymore. Oh, I don't feel this way. And I think that is an earnest attempt online. I'm just saying it can't be my full self, but I was trying, like, I was like, hold on. I can't say this to you anymore. Now I'm gonna talk about me and maybe that will do this other thing. It was an, it was an honest attempt. Was I an honest self? Impossible. Um, but I think we can connect. I mean, there's balance to everything. I don't think anything exists in this world that is all bad or all good. I think the balance is that I get to be here having this conversation with you and these questions, I was like, I don't know. I, I have to go think about all these now, right? Um, <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. Maybe we don't have to be that online. Maybe we can accept that we are lying a little bit and then just stop saying that we're not and see what happens from there. Like, no, we're kind of not saying all of it, but we're saying something. So let's just deal with what we're saying. But we're so desperate to say we're telling the truth or that we're right on there that we can't even use it for what we're getting from it. Yeah.
So I don't know. I think that's why I love your most recent. Oh, go ahead, Will. I want to ask two quick questions because I know we're running. Yeah, I, and I'm fine for time, so it, it's on you. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Um, so one thing I will say, I think I want Mike showed me your first Jilla or one of the Jilla's black videos, whichever one was my first, and I was like, oh shit, this is really really dope. Like somebody is, just, she's just killing it, right? And then like I started watching more and more, and I was like, oh no, this is not it. Like. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And no lie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe about the fourth, fifth one in. I was like, this is giving me like real like Ben Shapiro vibes. Like, <laughs> like I was like, oh wow, this is a person talking really, really fast to mm -hmm. just the internet. Mm -hmm. And it was, and it was almost like when people just spew stuff off. I don't, I don't spew, but when people say stuff extremely, extremely fast yeah. in a certain tone. It's like, oh, wow, you can't even refute it or even think back at it in the moment. Mm -hmm. so, oh, I guess I got to just accept this is a certain <laughs> kind of truth. <laughs> That's it. Um, I just wanted yeah. to say that. And uh, you said Jill is Black was unsuccessful. Uh, yeah. At least for you. How, how, do, how do you feel like you define success or failure for that character? Mm -hmm. And also, what have you taken away from that character back to your normal life? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Um, I think if you say it the right way, people can't refute it. Yeah. And what I will say is, I was pretty good at that part. <laughs> if I have to give <laughs> one compliment to Dylan's Black, I'd be like, fine, you were, you were fast enough and self-righteous enough where it seemed like kind of scary to come in and say anything else. And I watched people try and I watched them get shut down by people who were just like, no, you don't know what she said. And I'm like, well, kind of, I know what they're saying, but you know, it takes a long time before I'm pulling people from the comments into an honest conversation and be like, hey, I hear you, right? Um, I think it was unsuccessful if it had stayed that way. Um, so I think because I transitioned it, it got a little better, but if it had just stayed there, if I was still there doing like Jill Shapiro videos, Jill Shapiro, yo, that's a, that's bad. Um, Ooh. I'm glad I'm not there doing that anymore. Um, I'm very thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for people who are willing to be like, yeah, I don't know, Jill, it did, it did get weird. Um, but I also saw it too, right? So I think the success was that it didn't take me a long time to get my own memo. Um, it went from the dear white people. I was like, ah, I don't know. Then I was like, wait, are we being hypocritical? Are we being accountable? Are we being, we keep saying, fine, dear black people. And then I was like, but who are you? You're out here in these same rooms with these same people using this same jargon. Who, who are you to say anything? Fine, dear me, right? And I think now it's this book of like, how vulnerable can I get this book because I think people deserve it. Um, whether you agree with it or not, I think we deserve to see somebody kind of unravel in front of us in ways we don't see anymore with curated selves. So I don't, I think that part is successful, but if it had stayed the way that it was, no. Um, the part that sticks with me now is that I had such a big fall from so much ego that I can't forget it. You know, I just remember being Oh, in the back room of my grandparents' house, just being like, what are we doing? Like, what is this? And I would hate, I'd hate to go make a video. I'd hate mm -hmm. it. It was so much, eventually I just hated it. In the beginning, I loved it, right? Because I was like, ooh, all the likes are coming tonight. But then eventually, you, you know, you get, you get, I mean, you can even get tired of that, right? Because now you, you don't believe people eventually because they're telling you they listen to you on mute. And so you're like, all right, let me go out here and make this video um that I didn't know I was very unhappy um and I wanted something else because I didn't have any answers so all I had was questions for other people and a couple for myself but I still wasn't happy um so I think I never lied when I was Jill is Black I was wrong maybe but I didn't lie and the part that remains the same is I'm gonna be wrong again I'm gonna be wrong about parts of this book, but I will never again be shocked. I will never go through that same transition of it just like blowing my mind that I'm wrong. I'll always be like, all right, yeah, and what's next? So I feel a lot less hesitant to move on to my next big lesson, a lot less committed to what I see as truth out there in the world. 
um, while also still being bold enough to express the current truth, right? So this is a book of current truths, but people ask me like, are you already disagreeing with yourself from this book? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. And that's yeah, I'm, I'm disagreeing with myself from the next book. Like, I, th- that's the point. I'm going to continue to do that um, in public. Um, so I think that, but I'm with you. Like, watch out for people who are talking so that you can't quite hear them. Yeah. Watch yeah. out for the Shapiro's, especially the Jill Shapiro's. <laughs> yeah, watch out for those Jill Shapiro. They're really tricky because they look like ass. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A thousand percent. Oh yeah. man, that's so powerful. So I guess I just ask this real quick to wrap up. Like saying what you just said about the way Jill's bike would be wrong versus you being wrong. Um talking about how much you hated doing the you know videos at a certain point for Jill's bike, but looking at how it seems like just so honest and sincere the videos you're doing lately are, um, which are kind of sparingly, like it seems like I think there's a notable step back in your in your online presence. Um you've notably changed your name to Jill Louise Busby on Instagram, for example. Mm -hmm. And then looking at the last essay of the book, uh, which is read the book. If you don't don't read nothing else, read the the last essay and how that ends. Do you have any more use for Jill is Black at this point? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll still be asked some questions. Um, I was very excited to do this interview. So really, I mean, the pleasure is completely mine because I haven't, um gotten to like talk like this in a while right um so i think i'm still in some of these situations being like oh what are we doing and who are we when we show up here (laughs) for this and you know not everybody is understanding um not all white people are understanding what i mean and i think as a black person you still have to have the confidence to make sure that they do um jill is black is not completely gone because I'm still a black queer woman in America. And let me, it is so she can't go, she was here to begin with for a reason. And so she's still here now. I just don't listen to her as much. I know when to bring her out um, and be like, oh, you gotta get told off for asking me this question like this. Okay, I'm gonna do it in this most open Zen possible way, which Jill's Black wouldn't do, but trust me, she's right here in the room with me. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I'm still reactive. Like there's stuff out there where you see it and you're just like, wow, I can't believe that this is going on. Like, I just, I just can't believe it. And I don't have any other reaction other than like rage and wanting to really tell you off in a good solid way. That's still there. Um, it's still there. So I, I guess I'm just leaving room for it still being there. I'm not saying whether it should exist or not, but realistically it still does. When I get pissed off, she's still right there um but maybe for all black people i don't i don't know i mean i've seen some pretty adjacent black people um lose it sometimes um in the right circumstance so maybe that's forever i'm not sure so just by just a bullet in the chamber just sitting there waiting to just she's sitting, fire off. she's sitting you know okay. she's sitting no 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 well we appreciate you so much jill you have thank you so much Anything else you wanted to talk about as far as like what you might have going on uh, when the next book is on the way? Because we already waiting for it. Um, oh, when okay. It, when the movie is um, based on your. Oh, show. right. Yes. That's something I can manage. Um, watch Moms as Managers. Yeah, I would like to bring that back. Um, I am having a lot of fun there. And it's so awesome. I think it's, awesome. it's a, a version of me that I still feel 100% about. Um, I think, oh, you can follow me or unfollow me at Jill Louise Busby on all social platforms. Um, and yeah, I have a couple of like online things. I'll be doing the Wisconsin Book uh, Festival, the Miami Book Fair, and those will be streamed, but you can find those on my social media. I don't know. Um, you know like, <laughs> like, y'all, I don't, I you're can't. Not, you're not very good at the shameless plug. Like, Look, you and our no. last guest, uh, I don't know if you listen, I don't know if you watch FD Signifier on YouTube. Um, that sounds so familiar. His real name is Feek, but he's a guy with dreads. Um, okay, I will watch now, if nothing um, else. I, there you go, boom. Uh, he did I, the like, same thing. 
We, we had him on the show. My man couldn't even spell his own URL for his Patreon. It was like, <laughs> yeah, he didn't even know it. It was pitiful. Okay, well, he's he's beating me. Uh, I could, I could, I could get to the bottom of my stuff. Um, I think it's like, yeah, that's where you can find me. And I don't know how much of this I can do and not do. I'm not sure yet. Um, I tell everybody in all of these interviews, like, I'm gonna get my bills paid, but that's what I'm gonna do. So if you see me doing anything weird, it probably won't be a movie. Um, <laughs> that feels like I'm just going to be very complicit, but you know, I'll, I'll figure out some kind of balance. And if you're interested in watching someone figure out that balance, then you can follow me. I'd follow me. Um, I would take the show uh, done via me. Um, so we'll see how we, we pay for that. Um, but other than that, I don't know. I mean, I, until I have answers to these questions about what is really successful or how we are really in these rooms and what we're saying when we're in them, then I can only like be so enthusiastic about my, my plug, you know? Okay. But, got you on that. We'd be enthusiastic for you. Don't even worry be enthousi- about it. Yeah, please, please we'll do. Take care for you. But like I said, thank you so thank much. You so, so freaking much for just making the time, your insight and a super dope conversation that I knew was going to be amazing. It really was. I no, I'm no longer scared. Um, <laughs> you should still be scared. <laughs> you should be differently scared now, <laughs> but scared nonetheless. Well, you need to watch Moms as Managers because this, what you think Curb Your Enthusiasm is, that's what Moms as Manager really is. Really? <laughs> yes, it's 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 amazing. I can plug that. I can plug Moms as Managers all Man. day. My mom is my mom is worth watching mom and is so fucking funny she's she's worth watching so i'll put that out there i will shamelessly plug moms as managers even if i mean please buy the book but even if you don't moms as managers might be it it is it i'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pitching it. it's gonna replace insecure on hbo um all right man i guess we're gonna get into this um and jill if you want to stick around if not i don't know if you, i don't know if you press the time but this is what usually when we do the thirst of the week but we just celebrate black women out here doing their thing being beautiful being bossy Doing whatever. Um, I don't know who Will's got this week. It's usually it's just different black, it's completely random black woman. Cool. I'm gonna mute myself, but I, I do want to hear it. All right, cool, cool. All right, this week. Oh shit. I gotta give you post- Oh my god, this guy. <laughs> you ain't sending me the message in the chat <laughs> like you usually do. All right, this week, uh, we have somebody Mike definitely knows. Um this week it is the beautiful Miss Whit. Whitley, Nicole. Oh, what's that? Um, hey. Yeah. Um, dope, dope photographer uh, based out of Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, we used to work with her back in the day at Sam's Club. Slaves Club was my call. <laughs> and you can't say um, that. There might be a sponsor. Don't, don't say that. I know, right? <laughs> Can't mess up the bag. <laughs> um, she is, she's an amazing photographer. Uh, she mostly does newborns and baby pictures and things like that. Um, the reason I am shouting her out now is because uh, I was very, I was very happy to see that she uh, has work that is in like different magazines. Like I was reading a business magazine, and like out of nowhere, I like saw her name. What? Yeah. So I was like, I was, I was amazed, and I was happy to see that uh, yeah. somebody sticking with their business and it growing, um, especially somebody that we knew from back in the day. So uh, yeah, the amazing Miss uh, Whitley Nicole, um, check her out. Sincerely yours photography uh sincerely yours baby it's her instagram uh you can book today at wnbell27 at gmail.com first of all as a photographer any photographer like proudly working with toddlers all the problems (laughs) that shit is hell but i'm super happy for her that's dope um yeah man that's it for the day man like i said thank you so much jill we appreciate you we love you anything you. you need from us please hit us up anytime we Smart got a lot questions. of, you know, we, we trying to get some views out here. We trying to blow up a little bit, surely, but surely. And um, of course, as you should. <laughs> I do have one more question for you, but we can ask it off here. So. Oh, okay. Oh, you have a VIP question. Wow. <laughs> He's letting everybody know. Y'all will never know what. <laughs> <laughs> you will never know unless you're in the inside. Cool You'll kids. Never coming. know what that was. <laughs> well, thank y'all so much for watching us today. Um, we appreciate y'all as always. Like Will said. Patreon.com slash cultivated ignorance if you want to support us. Thank you for everybody who's already supporting us. Y'all help us pay guests, pay for ads, pay our for each of our 10 kids that we have. It's, it's it helps everything. So we love y'all so much. Will has 15. 
And we'll see y'all next time. Peace. Peace.